Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's river tutorial. What you see in the vise is a March brown done. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H130 barbless hook. This one's at size 10 and it's on a fine wire. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Fish On Ultimate Tine Silk and it's black. So as always with the uh, the silks I'm going to add a little spot of super glue to the shank of the hook and then I'm going to use my thread to spread that and then I'm going to lay a bed of silk down the shank. Now as I get near the point I want to just take away my waist end and then I'm going to carry on to approximately where a barb would be on a barbed hook. Okay for the tail of this fly all I'm using is a bit of cock, an old cock feather that I've got here and I'm just going to rip off between half a dozen and uh, seven, eight fibres. So I've got myself a reasonable tail and I want it to be the length of the shank of the hook. So I'm going to catch that on. If it doesn't splay up for you, you can always put a loop of thread in behind the bend to lift it, but that seems to be sitting quite nice for me. Before I come any further, I'm just going to take away some of the waste there, not all of it. I want to keep it nice and even. And then I'm going to bring that up like so. Now what I want to do is create a little bit of a taper and I'm going to prepare my body. And what I'm using for the body is some of this. It's moose mane, natural moose mane. And I've already picked off three fibres from that which I've got here and I've kind of loosely married up the tips and I want to take them tips away the weakest part of the material let's get rid of them and then what I can do is the length of the body which is going to be about that much I can capture that and I've just captured that in at my side and I'm going to gently bring my thread all the way down and I'm actually using the moose mane as a guide for the thread now all the way down the body and when I get to the end I'm going to come up in open turns because what I want to do is just increase the bulk through the body so I get that taper that I'm after and once I've got that into position I can then bring up my moose mane body so you get a really nice effect with this. Uh, I don't know uh, if many of you have used moose mane. It's not a it's not a material that is readily available. I don't think. I mean, you could find it well enough on the internet, but um, you just get a really unique body with it. You you don't quite get the same effect with stripped stripped quill. The moose mane gives that real banded look to a fly. I really like it for certain patterns and this uh, this one proved quite effective for me last year. Great wee pattern. It's just uh, more a suggestive pattern than an exact match for the March Brown but it certainly does a job. So I've removed that and what I'm going to do next is protect the moose mane because it is a fairly delicate material and to do that I'm just going to add the tiniest layer of resin remember this is a dry fly we don't want to add a whole lot of weight to the fly but a little bit of resin will just protect that moose mane you can give that a blast Thank you. 
and that's that cured. Okay, next we're going to put, you can do lots of things with this if, if you like, you can put a CDC wing in, uh, it's, it's really up to you, but I'm going to do a combination of the two, so when I find the CDC, here it is, uh, it's from Troutline, and this one is the uh, brown, it's been dyed brown, CDC, and what I've done is I've taken three plumes out the pack, and I've married up the tips as best I can. And what I want to do is have the CDC about the length of the body. I'm just going to switch hands there, and catch that in. Nice and tight, just to keep it on the top like that. Now this is obviously a pattern that's made to represent the Dunn, so that's the adult of the, uh, the Mark Brown family. It starts life off as a nymph at the bottom of the river and it can spend uh, a few years there growing on before it climbs up through the water column and becomes an emerger and then eventually it grows out to be the full adult which is this is what this is meant to imitate. Next then we're going to add in our uh, main wing which is again it's deer hair and I'm going to take approximately a centimetre and I'm just going to cut this off camera. I have tried to uh, do this on camera before it doesn't quite work out. Um, so I've cut off about a centimetre and what I want to do with that is just comb out any of the fluff out of my threader and then I'll find my stacker, pop it in and then again just off camera, a few taps and I should have all my tips lined up. Okay, this time I want my deer hair to be about the same length as the CDC, maybe a little longer. So that looks about right. Now to make my life a little easier, before I tie this in, I'm just going to go off camera and cut away the dead end. So I've got a nice straight edge. And I'll bring that back and it saves any faffing later on. Bring your silk over in a loose turn. And then once you've got it into position, you can tighten down on it and start coming through these cut ends. You know, if, if you were of a mind to, you could quite easily have just left the deer hair as is. But I want to add a little bit more to this fly. I've got a little bit there that's just bothering me. Just get rid of it with my tweezers. And let me just have a look at your side. Yep. Looking not too bad. Just tidy that up a little bit more. And there's a little... There's one little tag there that's refusing to go down. So, uh, I've brought my thread to the top here. I'm going to lift everything up and come in behind the CDC with that last thread turn. Now, to encourage it to open up, I'm just going to start turning it anti-clockwise. And I'm going to grab some of this. So, this is, a, again, it's from Troutline. And it's natural grey possum. No, I should really have some out of the packet, but I don't. You don't need much of this. So I'm only taking the tiniest pinch here. Don't know how well you can see, it's very light, so. And what I want to do is just ease that into a sort of flat package like so. Then I can come in with my dubbing needle. and split the thread. You don't want to make a dubbing loop in this in this case because it, it just makes it too thick. So I've just caught that in and I'm going to give it a spin up. 
dee 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 dee. There we go. And then I don't want all this bulk. So again, I can come in with my fingers. Just make that nice and sparse. Now, I don't know how well you can see that. If I bring it to the side, it's a lovely sparse loop. Now, this does two jobs. It gives it that impression of a thorax. And it also helps to lift the CDC and the hair. Uh, sorry, the, the deer hair at the back here. Now, as you can see, I've still got quite a bit on my dubbing there. But before I come to the front, what I want to do is just add a little bit of super glue. Just to the front of the fly there. And this just helps to bed everything down. Just trying frantically to untangle, so I'm just going to twist it the other way. And then I can come in at the front. And I get that little thorax area and the hair just covers up. And I've not used enough, so I'm just going to try and save the day by adding another little tiny bit of dubbing. I'm usually guilty of using too much, but uh, not enough on this occasion. So I'm going to ease it all back. You can see I've still got quite a bit of space there at the head. And then just, there we go, perfect. There's always ways of, of saving the day. You know, if, you, if you've not got enough or too much, you can always add or take away as you see fit. Okay, to finish off then, I'm going to add a little touch of UV resin. Then I can come in with my whip finish tool. And just finish the fly off. Just caught something in there as I was uh, burling the tool round. Have a look at that in a minute once I've sealed it up. Then to finish off, all we need to do is just get that brushed out and looking rather dapper, if I do say so myself. There we go, and that's uh, an approximation of a March Brown done. I hope you enjoyed that, some useful techniques and uh, if you haven't seen the old moose mane stuff before, certainly worth thinking about picking up some, uh, great material, makes a really nice buzzer as well. Thanks very much for watching, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking that button, I would really appreciate your support.